Today we're going to start looking into the most self-evident component of language, words. For most people, words are a language. We may not know explicitly or think about the rules we use to put sounds into words and words into sentences, but we can certainly identify what counts as a word in our language and what doesn't. Let's start by examining what it is that we know when we know a word. The most important thing is we know how to say the word. In other words, we know its pronunciation. Linguists have a way of recording pronunciation in the phonetic script, which we will study a little later in this course. The phonetic script, seen here in the second line, records the pronunciation of the words eat, ate, eating, and eaten, and it captures each sound we produce precisely. But for now, we will concentrate on the words the sounds make. If our language has a written system, and not all languages do, and we're illiterate in our language, we also know how to represent the word graphically, in other words, spell it. When we know a word, we also know what grammatical category it belongs to, even if we don't know what to call this category. For example, we know that the word eat refers to an action. It's the kind of thing we do. After we start school, we learn that such words are called verbs. But even before we know the term verb, we know that words like eat are similar to words like run and talk and build, but not similar to words like young or mouse or quietly. We also know that the word food refers to a thing. It's something we can have, we can see, touch, smell, but it's not something we do. In school, we we'll learn that this category is called nouns, but even a three-year-old child will know that the word food in some way works like the word ball or the word toy, but not like the word run or talk. We also know what words mean. We can't necessarily always define them easily and clearly like a dictionary does, but we have a mental representation of the word's meaning and can label events, qualities, or entities in the world by their proper words. Finally, we also know how to use words properly depending on the context or desired shades of meaning. For example, the words pertinacious, stubborn, and pig-headed refer to approximately the same quality, a quality of holding on to one's opinion firmly and not giving way. But if we see it as a positive quality, we may describe the person possessing it as pertinacious. And if we see it as, as something negative or unreasonable, we may call the person pig-headed. So, to sum up, when we know a word, we know its pronunciation, which we call the phonological form. We also have the core concept of the word, the lexeme stored in our mind, along with all the morphological forms it can take in speech, like eat, ate, eating, and eaten are all forms of eat. We know whether the word is a noun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition, and so on. That is, we know its grammatical category. And we know what the word means. Form, category, and meaning are the three components of our knowledge of each word in our lexicon.